Good morning, everybody, and thank you for, uh, for attending this talk. So let me introduce a little bit more uh, of myself. I work at the university in Mexico City, and so I'm mainly an academic, but uh, I'm also, I also work closely with a software company, or I've been working with them for the last five years. Their name is Quarksoft. So what I'm going to be talking about today is the work that we've been doing with them in the, in the last year, and it's called Software Architecture in the Pre-Sales Process. So let me give you a, a, bit, a little bit of background about the company. So this is a company that was founded in 2001. Now they've got office, offices in Mexico, Spain, and USA. It's a relatively um, well-known company in, in Mexico City. It's one of the leading companies. And well, this company is characterized by the fact that they develop custom, custom software for uh, different domains, right? So they, they, they go across uh, domains such as insurance, manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera, for uh, government and private uh, businesses. So one of the particularities is that the projects that they, they usually do are fixed, fixed price projects. And, um, and one, one thing is, uh, that is also, I guess, particular is that most of the systems or many of the systems that they produce are greenfield development. So, so I get the, I guess, rare opportunity to see systems that are built from scratch. You know? Also, the company is rated at uh, CMMI level five, so they're very much into processes, and they use the team software process uh, method method for development. And actually, in the last book from from Watts Humphrey, they uh, they have he there's a chapter where they speak about quarks. So. Okay, so let me uh, possibly everybody here is uh, more or less familiar with the team software process, but I want just to give like a very very um, a, a very quick uh, oh sorry. Introduction. So th this is mostly a project uh, development method, right? So the focus for, for TSP is rather on project and quality management based on metrics. So the team software process doesn't really give you guidance on how to do your requirements. Like it, it won't uh, say do use cases or do uh, user stories. It doesn't say that. It doesn't tell you how to do architecture. So it's mostly on, on guiding on project and quality management. TSP works uh, by using by or by dividing the project across a series of cycles, where where each cycle uh, is uh, is characterized by having a launch and a post mortem. And within the cycle, there's a series of phases that are called requirements, high level design, code, and testing. So depending on the way the, of the life cycle that is decided, uh, the, the the activities are are spread out across the, the cycles. Okay, so. Uh, as, as I was telling you, I've been working with this company for a, for a while now, and in 2010, I came to Saturn to present the, the first part of the work that we had been conducting with them, uh, which was uh, related to adapting architectural methods into the team software process. So if we consider the architecture, the life cycle of, of uh, architectural development, there's these four big important phases, which are the architectural drivers activities, especially identifying primary functionality, quality attribute scenarios, and, uh, and uh, constraints. So essentially what we did here is that adapting uh, the, the scenarios technique and introducing it in the requirements phase. And the rest of the activities went into the high level design phase of TSP, which included the architectural design that was adapting ADD, architectural documentation, adapting the views and beyond approach to, to uh, or the templates to document the, the views and architectural evaluation, so we, we introduced scenario-based evaluation. Not really an ATEM, but something much lighter. So if you're interested about this work, you can, you can check the, the presentation, which is available online. So er, all that was working more or less well, but after a while, I mean, we came to a rally, realization, and this was that when projects were uh, started, started the, the operation of the projects, many architectural decisions had already been made. So even if we wanted to perform ADD and uh, like capturing the drivers, many things had already been selected previously. And where, where had these things been selected? Where, well, they had been selected in what we call the pre-sales process. So we had to turn out towards that, that phase of development. So let's understand a little better what this pre-sales phase is, right? So as I was, as I was saying, this company uh, is, uh, develops custom-based solutions for the customers. So the, the, the company is constantly trying to sell projects. So 
Essentially how it works is that projects are divided ac across two important phases, the pre-sales and the operation, which is made in TSP. So during the pre-sales, there's a pre-sales team, which is composed of a, of a leader and an architect. And what they do is that they essentially take a request for proposal or they interview customers and they produce a, a, a technical proposal, technical and cost, costing proposal. And as I was saying, the, the, typically this, the cost and the time is fixed for this project. So uh, if the proposal is, uh, well, there's two, two possibilities. Either the proposal is not accepted by the customer, then this ends, or it is accepted, and then the, the project starts its development, and here it's where the team software process is used. So as I was saying, the team software process is very oriented towards metrics, so there's a lot of data collection during the execution of the projects, and this goes into a historic database, which is then used during the pre-sales phase for estimation purposes. So how are projects estimated? Well, essentially, what happens is that the architect is gonna, is gonna uh, pr produce like a list of components that are uh, associated to specific technologies, and using data from the historic database, this, uh, this will help in estimating the time and cost of the, of the project, right? So the identification of these estimation components is an essential task in the pre-sales process. So the, these components, uh, imply that there's architectural work that needs to be done earlier, right? Earlier than the operation of the projects, that is during the pre-sales process. So let me give you a little bit more context about the, the pre-sales the pre process. Well, uh, typically, this is a, a process that is performed very, in a very short time, maybe around 10 business days. And the, the company actually doesn't want to invest that much time in this process because as, as I told you, it's uh, possible that the, the, the proposal won't be sold, right? So there is a limitation for the architect with respect to the time that he can spend in requirements and design phase. So he will spend between uh, 16 and 32 hours for requirements. This is a, for average projects and 24 to 48 hours in design, right? So this is like a very, very short time. Also, typically, they've got very limited information. So if we consider this model of requirements, they never get to have like use cases or more details of requirements. We stay at the level of needs and features, which would be the high level requirements, right? Um, short time, I already said that. Internal constraints, so there have to be additional considerations like the availability of uh, the resources that will be able to operate the project. All these things have to be considered. And as always, they have to be thinking that the company is competing against others. So, so they, they have to produce a good, a good estimate there. So as I was saying, in the initial work, we had the architectural development uh, methods here. But now we came to real, the realization that we need to, do, to create a pre-sales architecture for estimation uh, during, as a result of the pre-sales process. So, what we, after working here in the operation uh, phase, we turned out our attention was to the pre-sales and to more specifically to adapt these activities, these architectural development activities to the pre-sales process. So um, essentially what we did here is uh, turn the focus from a purely functional focus that they had originally because initially they were only like thinking about mostly functional features so we, we, we turned out to, to take a more uh, drivers-based uh, approach. So essentially what we did is uh, train the architects so that they would think in terms of uh, high-level uh, drivers, right? So primary features, something like, like this, like for a kiosk system that shall allow birth certificates to be visualized and printed, for example. Early quality attributes, so we don't get to have scenarios at that point because, as I was telling you, the, the time frame is very short. So for example, what we only try to have is like the, the, category, the type of quality attribute and at least an initial metric, right? For example, here, 100% of the information that is stored in the kiosk system shall be protected and also constraints. Now, for example, here, the operating system of the kiosk is Windows XP. So essentially, the only thing that we did here is try to, uh, to promote the, the use of architectural high-level drivers uh, during this phase. Architectural design, so for the, for the pre-sales phase, as I was telling you, the goals for architectural design are primar primarily estimation, project planning, and 
trying to satisfy at least initially these architectural drivers, right? So, uh, so, so in this sense, and as I was telling you, there is very limited time, the architects won't go in really into much detail about, about the architectural design. So essentially, the big decisions that they will de do is select and adapt a reference architecture. I will show one in a minute. Selection of technologies, establishment of a deployment layout, and the ident identification of components for estimation. So uh, let me show you this as an example. So what is a reference architecture? Well. There, a reference architecture is a model for, a, for a, an architecture of certain kinds of, uh, of applications. For example, this is a reference architecture from, from Microsoft for, for web applications. There's, there are catalogs of these reference architectures. So one of the, of the decisions that they have to do is select one of these. They also have to select technologies very early on. And what do they, why do they have to select technologies? Well, as I was saying, the historic database for the company is in terms of components that are associated to specific technologies, right? So they have to do that in order to be able to estimate with respect to historic data, but also because the, 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 the resources in the company, they may or not be familiar with the technology. So it's uh, one particularity here of the design process is this fact that technologies are at least the, the, the overall or the main technologies are chosen very early on, right? Mm, also, well, the deployment layout, I was, as I was saying, this will be, this, uh, this, this type of, these decisions are made uh, out of the, the high level quality attributes, for example, if they have things like availability or things like that. And finally, out of the functional uh, drivers, what they do is they identify components across the, 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 the reference architecture, right? So essentially, this is more or less, this is not a real, of course, a real design, it's just the concept, but this is more or less the level of design that is achieved in this such, such short time frame, right? And uh, well, an interesting thing is that we could consider this as, as an initial iteration of the attribute-driven driven design method, right? Where uh, the, 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 the outcome here is uh, the, the overall structure of the system, logically and physically. With respect to architectural documentation, so once, once the architect do this, uh, this uh, design, they document the architecture, but again, the time frame is very short. So what we did here is just, we just took from the views and beyond template, the primary presentation, and the component, cat the element catalog, right? So, and the views that are documented are the module view to show these functional, co these estimation components, Layers and technologies views, which shows the, 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 uh, the reference architecture with the selected technologies, and uh, the deployment view. So they, they produce these views, and these views are actually included in the technical proposal that is given to the, to the customer. And finally, the architectural evaluation. So we also adapted the, the, the evaluation method here. So again, we did something that is very, very agile, very short time. So we have two to four hour peer reviews and there's a team of architects that comes and we're gonna do essentially like the essence of, of, of a scenario-based evaluation where we're gonna take the, the, the most important drivers and examine the decisions of the, that the architect made uh, with respect to this uh, in order to identify risks. Now one, one thing that may be different from the traditional scenario-based evaluation is that we also study the project strategy. Because at this point, as I was telling you dur during the pre-sales phase, there's this estimation architecture, but an initial project plan. So what we try to do is see if the way that the TSP, uh, the, the, the initial proposal for the life cycle, is gonna support the, the technical risks that are identified, right? So this is, I guess, different from the typical evaluations. So we identify risks at the level of requirements. Typically, we're, we're gonna be finding things like the quality attributes are not quantified or they're not well aligned to business goals, design decisions that are risky. For example, the deployment layout is inappropriate because, I mean, with respect to availability, for example, or the architect chose a framework that nobody knows, in, no, nobody in the company is uh, familiar with, or the strategy that doesn't support the technical risks. So some results about this work, well, I think, I, I think it has, uh, has been a positive work because now architecture is, is taken into account right from the first moment of project development or considering development in the precious phase, right? Uh, the early requirement gathering is driven by the architectural drivers as opposed to previously where it was made 
directed by functionality. And also the fact that we have these evaluations and, uh, or the, the whole architectural life cycle, this ensures that the pre-sales architecture desi uh, design is well aligned to the drivers and the design decisions uh, uh, are appropriate and also that the strategy supports this design. And finally, the, the proposals that are delivered to the customer are uh, architectural or they have this architectural orientation. Some results of the evaluation process. Well, since uh, July th last year, we have conducted 18 evaluations. So as I told you, the, the, time, the time that we can spend on these evaluations is very short, two to four hours. But on average, we, we uh, identify six to seven risks. Around 60% of them are technical. And uh, well, we have like an in internal uh, questionnaire for the, our, our customers. And up to now, they have found this process to be very useful. <laughs> Ideally, this has to be made before they estimate, but it doesn't always happen that, that way. And also another challenge is to be able to respond very quickly, right? Because I was telling you, we have around uh, 10 business days, but by the time they, they have their design and they request the evaluation, uh, we have to respond really, really quickly. So, but we have managed to, uh, to be around three work days on average. Finally, some, some lessons learned. Well, starting architectural activities from the beginning of, of project dev development is very valuable in this particular context, right? Because this is, this is a, a, a different context from, from other, other things. But uh, in the end, this results in iterative architectural development, right? Because this is an initial iteration where we're going to have the early drivers, an initial iteration of ADD, initial views, an initial project plan. And then if the project gets accepted, we get a second round or even further rounds of architectural refinement here. Now the drivers transform, are transformed into quality attribute scenarios, more ADD iterations that now go in depth to, to, for, for design. We do the standard views using views and beyond and the actual project plan. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that I have had with respect to this is more related to logistic aspects rather than technical aspects, right? Some of, of the difficulties is being able to assemble the, the evaluation team quickly, right? Because the architects are all busy in their own projects and everything, and so typically I will uh, request some architects to come, and this is, this is one of the, of the most uh, difficult parts. Also, training of the architects so that they become uh, familiar with the, the concepts of drivers, risks, and all that stuff. And so in the end, I think one of the conclusions is that the organization itself must have some adaptations in order to support this type of things, right? The time given to the, the architects. And finally, the pre-sales pre phase is a great place to experiment with new, new approaches because since this, this process repeats itself so frequently, it's different from doing experiments during the operations phase where projects can take like a year to execute. So you're gonna, it's going to take a long time to, to see the results. And uh, also the, this, the, the fact that we have frequent evaluations are helpful to, for the architects to gain maturity because they come, they see other projects, and this happens really, really quickly. Unfortunately, it's not so detailed as in, uh, in, uh, in an architecture evaluation in, during the operations phase, but it's, it's good too. And the future work that the, I want to conduct is to evaluate the impact, right? Because right now, as I was telling you, we've got, we've got 18 uh, instances of these. And what we want to see is uh, now the projects that are sold, how, how are, are they going to fare once they are in operation? So up to now, we have only seen two projects. So the, 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 hit, the batting average is not so, so good. But um, so we had uh, an interesting uh, evaluation. I mean, actually, what I tried to do here is have the same team that had participated in the pre-sales process become the evaluators during the, the, the operations phase. And, uh, we compared the risks that were identified initially with the risks that were found after the actual architecture. And well, I think it was better than previous evaluations. But we still need to gather more data. But as I told you, this, this goes pretty slowly compared to the other one. So I hope to come maybe next year to, to, to tell about the results. <laughs>